All right, I'm recording. Hey gang, Andy here. Welcome to my journey to Japan vlog. I know in uh, my recent vlog I told you guys I was going out to uh, Canada, but uh, I have some good news and some bad news about that. So I missed my flight, basically and uh, had to rebook, but the good news is we're gonna be going out to London instead. So I've never been to London before, so that's gonna be pretty interesting. And uh, also, I won't have to worry about booking a hotel or any of that stuff, because they're all late night flights, or early morning flights, depending on your perspective. Yeah, just sitting here, waiting for the flight to take off. I'm boarding in about half hour or so. Sitting here waiting for that flight here in uh, Raleigh Airport here in North Carolina. It's been crazy. It's been the hottest minutes since I was last on a, on a flight. So probably about four years. We'll go ahead and uh, see you guys in London. So yeah guys, here we are in London, England. And uh, just about this cloudy outside actually, so you're not really missing much. But yeah, uh, landed about an hour or so ago, about six hours of flying, so not too bad, all things considered. I used to fly out to San Diego in about five hours, so eh, six is what I was. But uh, yeah, gonna go from here in London to uh, Haneda Airport in Tokyo, Japan. So that's gonna be about 11 hours to some change, so that's gonna be challenging. Uh, it's definitely been a while since I've gone on a long, long flight like this, but uh, the good thing about uh, how this whole rebooking thing all worked out was uh, I didn't have to worry about uh, finding a place to sleep while I waited for my next flight. I just slept on the flight over. But yeah, it's, it's actually been really fun out here. I didn't think it would be this much fun doing a lot of people watching and stuff. I don't know, it's just something I find funny. <laughs> So yeah, we're going to be heading out on our flight here in about an hour or so, so I'm just going to sit back, relax, and uh, chill out until then. So yeah, see y'all in Tokyo, Japan very soon. Well, soon in this vlog, thanks to the power of editing. But uh, for me, it'll be 11 hours and some change, so uh, yeah. <laughs> see you there. All right, good morning from Tokyo, Japan. So yeah, we out here, um, staying here at the uh, Nakano guest house here in Nakano. And uh, right now I got a lovely view of the Shinjuku skyline here at the tippy top. And uh, this is what I get to see every morning. So yeah guys, just got my first full night's sleep here in Tokyo. I can say that coming to Japan is definitely the right choice, especially near the end there. I was just debating on if I really should like maybe wait another semester, or save up a little more, do this, do that. But really, at the end of the day, you know, you get this freaking view. You can wake up to this view every morning for uh, not a whole lot of money. I'm actually gonna be doing a video talking more about the guest house later. Right now, I just wanna talk about just the whole experience of, of coming back to Japan for me. Now, as you guys know, I've wanted to do this for uh, over four years. When I was living in Japan the first time around in Yokosuka, even though I wanted to get out of the Navy, I didn't want to leave Japan. But at the time, I didn't know of any way for me to, to stay out here. And it wasn't until many years later that I found out that you could use the GI Bill to study out here in Tokyo. And here I am, man. We out here. It's a dream come true. And I definitely want to take you guys along with me on this journey in Japan for, uh, for Andy Japandi and uh, you know, talk about different aspects of Japan, just with different life in Japan, you know, and show you that there's more than one way to, uh, to live out here. And uh, even if you say to yourself, well, I don't have a whole lot of money, or you know, there's no way Japan's gonna happen for me, or this, that, and the other, you know, if anything, show you my videos to show you that, you know, there is a way to achieve your dreams. And if coming to Japan is usually your dream, then uh, there's definitely ways to, uh, to get out here. And I also want to talk with some people who have uh, come to Japan through other means as well and uh, give you guys a broader perspective on things. And uh, I just can't wait to show you guys all that. And I'm shaking for the excitement and also it's really fucking cold out here. <laughs> so sorry if I'm slurring my words, but I'm just, uh, it just, you know, like I said, I just, I just didn't know 
if coming to Japan at this time was the right decision. You know, because I just worried about having enough money to survive until the GI Bill started kicking in. And I still worry about that, not gonna lie. But, you know, when, once I arrived and once I got on the train for the first time in over four years, it just, it felt like everything just fell into place. It's almost like I never left. You know, I just, like everything just snapped into place for me. I don't know, it's, it's, it's hard to explain. Yeah, it's a lot different than the, uh, the first time I arrived in Japan. So I, I definitely know more of what to expect out here. But that being said, there's also a lot of areas for improvement for myself as well. Uh, most notably, learning more Japanese because um, living here at the guest house, there's a lot of people here who speak really good Japanese, and uh, I'm still pretty dang rusty. You know, there's not a whole lot of opportunities to uh, talk with a real live Japanese person out in Michigan, Ohio, or uh, North Carolina. So I uh, definitely got to brush up on my Nihongo desu yo. Ne? It's uh, one of my main goals for, uh, for living out here. This video, I guess this will be my first Andy Japandi video in over four years. Oh my gosh. Um, I wish I would have had more footage of airports and stuff like that on my way here and then of the train and all that kind of stuff. But honestly, I was just so jet lagged. I couldn't even think straight. I was lugging all of my luggage and stuff across Tokyo just to get to this, this spot. Got to the point where it like really tore my shoulders up really bad. When I went to go take a shower, I was like, yeet. <laughs> Looked like ground up hamburger meat. Yeah, you know, at the end of the day, it was all worth it. Persistence pays off. And I uh, just want to thank you guys for sticking with me through this long and crazy journey back to Japan. <laughs> and uh, be on the lookout for some more videos. And uh, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Hey guys, Andy here. And today on Andy Japandi, I'm going to show you some mochi pounding. Stay tuned. Yeah, guys, that was some prime mochi pounding, if I do say so myself. And with that said, this is the Andy San. So for now, here in lovely Tokyo, Japan. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Hey, guys, Andy here. And today on Andy Japandi, I'm going to take you to Nakano Broadway in my local neighborhood of Nakano, Tokyo, Japan. Coming up. Before we go to Nakano Broadway, I have to get something to eat. 
and being Mr. America Jen, I gotta get my hamburger on Freshness Burger. I had the classic burger WW set, thick cut fries, and a melon soda. It's not something I eat regularly being back in Japan, and plus since I'll be doing a lot of walking around, I want to make sure I'll have the energy for it. After my meal, I headed to Nakano City Hall, which is nearby Nakano Broadway, to take care of my address registration and other admin stuff. This visit to City Hall has taught me anything, it's that I need to really work on my Japanese this year for my New Year's resolution. But despite my shortcomings with the Japanese language, I managed to get everything taken care of. So yeah guys, we out here at the uh, Nakano City Hall. Um, just got done getting some admin work taken care of. Sorry for the beeps in the background, but yeah. Uh, just got done putting in my new uh, address and signing up for the my number and the insurance and all that fun stuff. It's gonna be coming in the mail very soon. So yeah, now that I got done taking care of that, let's go on to Nakano Broadway. See you there. Welcome to Nakano Broadway, a large shopping district well known for its many specialty shops serving the needs of otaku everywhere. Nakano Broadway is a fantastic alternative to Akihabara when it comes to getting your weeb on. They have plenty of manga, figures, signed animation cells, and sketches. In addition, there's also a wide variety of merchandise from other countries as well, especially from America. I was really surprised to see many old figures from my childhood. If you're looking for anime slash manga goods from your childhood, I found good old Akiba to be lacking in that department. But where Akiba comes up short, Nakano Broadway makes up for it in spades. And you can get way better deals here than in Akiba, where many of the prices are fixed from store to store. Don't get it twisted, I still love Akihabara and think it's the OG otaku mecha, but for my money, Nakano Broadway is the place to be if you're a hopeless weeb like myself. So yeah guys, I totally forgot to shoot the outro for Nakano Broadway. So yeah, that was Nakano Broadway. And with that said, this is the Andy Sun. Sound for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Hey guys, Andy here. And today on Andy Japandy, I'm gonna be taking you to the limited Toho Animation Store.
door out here in Shinjuku, Tokyo, Japan. Coming up. So yeah guys, that was the Toho Animation Store out here in Tokyo. And with that said, this is the Andy San. Signing for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later guys. Bye. Hey guys, Andy here. And today on Andy Japandi, I'm gonna take you to the Godzilla store here in Shinjuku, Tokyo, Japan. Coming up.
So yeah guys, that was the Godzilla store here in Shinjuku, Tokyo, Japan. And with that said, this is the Andy san signing for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later guys, bye. Hey guys, Andy here, and today on Andy Japan Eek, I'm gonna take you to the Evangelion store here in Shinjuku, Tokyo, Japan. Coming up. That was the Evangelion store here in Shinjuku, Tokyo, Japan. And with that said, guys, this is the Andy Sign. Sign for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Hey, guys, Andy here. And today on Andy Japandi, I'm going to show you the Nintendo store here in Shibuya, Tokyo, Japan. Coming up. Welcome to Nintendo Tokyo. Here at Nintendo Tokyo, they have all kinds of different merchandise from the Super Mario franchise, including dolls, cell phone cases, plushies, 
and even bento boxes. They also have a wide collection of shirts as well. And also decorative pillows and magnets and notebooks and commemorative plushies as well. So you can definitely get your fix for just about anything Mario related. And they also have stuff from the Pokemon franchise, although that's mostly contained to the Pokemon store, which will be in an upcoming video. But they do have a couple things here at this Nintendo store. They also have Nintendo erasers as well. In addition to characters from the Super Mario franchise, they also have stuff from other Nintendo franchises like The Legend of Zelda. And Animal Crossing. as well as Splatoon. And of course, Kirby. They also have a couple selections of store-exclusive Nintendo Switch colors for the Joy-Cons. And you can also purchase some Nintendo Switch games there as well, here at Nintendo Tokyo. So yeah guys, that was the Nintendo Store out here in Tokyo, Japan. With that said, this is the Andy San. Sign up for now, and as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later guys, bye. Hey guys, Andy here, and today on Andy Japan, I'm going to take you to the Capcom store here in Tokyo, Japan. Coming up. Welcome to the Capcom store in Tokyo. And there's all kinds of different plushies from all different walks of Capcom, including Okami. And of course, Mega Man, or Rock Man, as he's known here in Japan. Pretty much anything you can stick a Rock Man on, they're there. And of course, you got the games. And they even have store exclusive merch. Look at this bag. You also have all kinds of different t-shirts from all the different franchises that are part of Capcom, including some combination ones as well. There's also some pretty interesting uh, pieces of merchandise there with Dalsum's curry and uh, some bento boxes as well. And of course, he also has some stuff from the Devil May Cry franchise as well, including figurines, keychains, shirts. Also a franchise I'm, to be honest, not quite familiar with too much is Monster Hunter. So they have a lot of Monster Hunter merchandise, including this little stand that you can take a picture at, the giant sword. Uh, 
also have the different banners of the different teams or classes. And it's just really cool to see all the different intricate details that a lot of these higher level figures have and the different styles of the figures as well. So if you're out in Tokyo, be sure to check out the Capcom store. So yeah, guys, that was the Capcom store here in Tokyo, Japan. And with that said, this is the Andy Sign. Sign for now, and as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Hadouken! Hey guys, Andy here, and today on Andy Japan, I'm gonna take you to the jump shop here in Tokyo, Japan. Coming up. Welcome to the Jump Shop, home of all your favorite characters from Shonen Jump. Including Goku from Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, and Dragon Ball Super. We don't count GT. And Luffy from One Piece. And they have all kinds of different merchandise from the various franchises that are part of Shonen Jump, including towels, stickers, notebooks, shirts, even some of the cursed fruit from One Piece. You can also buy all kinds of posters, wall scrolls, little pillows. I really like this uh, shiny gold shirt that depicted some of the characters from Naruto. I thought that was just baller. And of course, you got the classic Naruto headband. And you got some of the uniforms from the various uh, sports anime out there. One of the things I really liked about the shop is that they actually had height charts for some of the characters from the well-known franchises. So you could literally like walk up and see how tall you were, kind of like rank yourself relative to like what characters. Oh, and for those of you wondering, I'm 175 centimeters. <laughs> And they also had some uh, one-off art pieces there as well that you could purchase. So if you're out in Tokyo, Japan, be sure to check out the Jump Shop for all your Shonen Jump needs. So yeah, guys, that was the Jump Store here in Tokyo, Japan. And with that said, this is the Andy Sound. Shop's out for now. As always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Hey, guys, Andy here. And today on Andy Japan, I'm going to take you to the Pokemon Center here in Tokyo, Japan. Let's take a look. Welcome to the Pokemon Center here in Tokyo. One of the cool things about this particular Pokemon Center is the Mewtwo that greets you from his hyperbolic sleep chamber. And it's really cool to see all the different graphics and stuff on there and the bubbles in the background and the changing colors. It's really wild. And behind the Mewtwo hyperbaric sleep chamber, there's also a lot of little fun facts about some Pokemons. And just like with the Nintendo store, there's a lot of collaboration between Pokemon and Mario. And one of the cool things about this Pokemon store is that they have all kinds of different graffiti styles as well. So you can get them on skateboards, you can get them on hoodies, hats, shirts, all kinds of different things. I've never seen Pokemon styled like this before. It's really cool. And yes, you can even get them on fanny packs. And they have different graffiti Pokemon styles around the store as well. And it's just really wild to see. Another cool thing about this particular Pokemon Center is they also have collaborations with Swarovski Crystals, which have various cell phone cases, one-off Pokemon covered in Swarovski Crystals. They also have notebook covers and all kinds of different things. And it's really cool to see. And you can actually buy them. Well, if you have the money for it anyway. And of course, if you're into Pokemon Go, they got you covered. Literally, with hats, shirts, all kinds of different merchandise from the Pokemon Go franchise. 
And of course, no Pokemon Center would be complete without Pokemon plushies, right? Of which this one has a plethora of them. So if you're out in Tokyo, be sure to give this Pokemon Center a visit. So yeah, guys, that was the Pokemon store back there. And with that said, this is the Andy San. Time for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Hey, guys, Andy here. And today on Andy Japandi by popular demand, I might say, I'm going to be getting myself a new haircut. <laughs> so without further ado, let's cut the do. Stay tuned. So yeah guys, we out here at QB House, which is known for some really cheap cuts, and they're quick too, so two things I like, <laughs> quick and cheap. I'm gonna give the fro a little bit of a trim, put away the winter coat for the season, and uh, see you inside. So yeah guys, just got myself a nice haircut. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to record inside just because of a lack of space. Wasn't really any place to put my cell phone down at, so sorry, kinda, kinda was what it was. But uh, yeah, lovely haircut for uh, 1200 yen or about $12 USD. That's about what I'm used to paying back in uh, Mercogen land. And now, these freaking sirens. <laughs> And uh, now, for the big reveal. Whew. Woo! Look at that nice shiny head. Hell yeah. <laughs> it's a bit shorter than what I'm used to, but I actually like it, and I won't have to go in for a haircut for a little bit. And uh, I feel so much lighter, you know? So uh, just for a point of reference, it's uh, nine on top, on the sides, so just gotta remember that. I gotta study up on my Nihongos as far as learning to get a haircut, cause like I, I looked it up and it's just like, basically just like, kato kurasai, you know, just like, okay. That doesn't really tell me anything. So uh, no ya Nihongos when coming to get a haircut. So uh, yeah, um, that's about it for this video. So with that said guys, this is the Andy san Sorry for now, and as always, We'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Hey, guys. Andy here. And today on Andy Japandi, I'm going to show you the currency of Japan. Coming up. Okay, hey guys, we have here the different denominations of Japanese currency. The only thing I'm missing is the 2,000 yen bill. Um, that's back in America. I managed to get one before I left Japan the first time around. Here's what we got as far as a uh, regular print currency goes. So we'll start from the top. So here we have the 10,000 yen bill. Um, it's roughly equivalent to about $100 American. 5,000 yen bill, about $50. 1,000 yen bill. Uh, it's about ten dollars and then over on the coin side we have the 500 yen coin it's about five dollars 100 yen coins dollar 50 yen coin 50 cents 10 yen 10 cents 5 yen coin about five cents then we have the one yen coin which is about a penny one cent and here they all are stacked against each other so yeah guys that was the currency of japan and with that said this is the andy san got it for now as always and forever We'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Hey, guys. Andy here. And today on Andy Japandi, I'm going to be moving to a new guest house. Coming up. All right, so before we begin, I figure I'd give you a little tour of the box as it stands right now. So see you in the next bit. All right, so this is my box. Yeah, right here I have some carpets that I got from Daiso, um, just to kind of help uh, soften the blow whenever I land on here. <laughs> my little entrance, my little Genkan as it is. Next up you have uh, different little storage units and stuff. So I got a little, little storage box I got from Daiso, laptop case, uh, my hamper. I also got some laundry detergent and stuff back there. That's the box front monitor that I'm gonna use to move. And uh, some other little doodads and things. So, 
Let's move on to the futon. So here at this guest house, you can get uh, the full-size futon, which is what this is, or you can get a smaller size futon for about uh, 3,000 yen less a month. That's about 25 bucks USD, roughly. But I decided to get the full size. And it actually helps curb my uh, extra spending, help fill the space up since it uh, does a pretty good, good job of doing that by itself. So from here, you have a little clothes rack over here. I just got some shirts and stuff. Then I got this uh, towel hanger. Um, I saw that at Daiso and I was like, what? But uh, it's really come in handy and it's helped kept my towel nice and bone dry. Then over here you got other little doodads and things, headphones, camera, um, just like some cleanup stuff over there, multivitamins. Then you got my uh, PC set up. Uh, I got a laptop right here, a little trackball, a keyboard, monitor. I had to get an external monitor because the, uh, the onboard, even though I sent it in to get fixed, only lasted like maybe a day and then it died again. So I'm just like, Shh. Just get an external monitor, because at this point I don't care. And uh, got some old storage things down here. And a uh, glass case. And uh, Unko-chan, <laughs> Unko-kun, I guess, um, that I got from uh, Grace and Yosuke of the Texan Tokyo channel. Yeah, I got some pillows and stuff. This guest house gives you this little pillow, but uh, I've had my OG for years now. Humidifier, really useful in the winter time, not so much now. Uh, fan, very useful now. And my little tower of power, where I plug in all my stuff. Hard drive over there, and the box comes with a little light to help uh, illuminate the place. So, that's my little tour of the box as it stands now. So yeah, see you in the next bit. And here's what it looks like with uh, everything all moved. Uh, only taking the last bit back to good old Kanagawa. So just got the futon all set up. I said I could leave the pillow and the blanket and stuff here. So yeah, it's uh, it's left the good old box. It's been fun, but I gotta split. Whew. Oh my god, you guys! I'm just covered in sweat and just a just a drizzle of rain. But man, after three three trips back and forth from Nakano to where I'm at out here in uh, Kawasaki, finally got everything over. And oh my god, I am so fucking exhausted, you guys. But. Here's the room as it stands now. I haven't organized anything. I've literally just been dumping stuff and then uh, going back for more. But uh, here it is as it is now. So see you in the next bit. All right, so here is the bed. It's covered in all my uh, my clean clothes and stuff. I'm going to be putting them up in the uh, little clothes rack here shortly. Uh, I got my own fridge, which is super awesome. Got my own air con, which is double awesome. And then I got a window out there as well. Um, obviously it's nighttime right now. And uh, got my own little little mini desk table area. Got my own little router. Only disadvantage is it doesn't have Wi-Fi, but it does have ethernet. So I'll just plug it into my laptop and be good to go. Then uh, there's my bags and stuff. And then look at all this like closet space. <laughs> just the freaking stupendous amount of closet space, <laughs> way more than I'll actually be using. But uh, yeah, this is the room. Oh, and it's uh, tatami mats. I uh, got it a little bit cheaper than the uh, the wood floors. So as long as I don't do anything too stupid, stay on the carpet, uh, things will be good. So yeah, guys, that was my move all the way from Nakano to here in uh, Kawasaki, Kanagawa, Japan. And uh, once we get everything all set up here, I'll be doing a uh, proper room tour as well as a uh, little tour of the guest house here. So be uh, sure to stay tuned for that. But for now, guys, I'm really fucking beat. So <laughs> with all that said, this is the Andy Sign. Sign up for now. Super fucking happy to be back in Kanagawa, Japan. And uh, they have my own room as well. So just want to thank you guys for tuning in this video. And uh, as always, and forever, we'll see you next time. Get to you later, guys. Bye.
Hey guys, Andy here, and today on Andy Japandy, I'm gonna give you a tour of my Japanese guest house coming up. All right, so first up, let's go into the Gankan. This is where everybody keeps their shoes and whatnot. Plenty of space for all your footwear needs. So for me, I am right up front. Bam, baby. Let's go ahead, take off my shoes, and put on these nice slippers. All right, let's do this thing. So over here you have Nice little bathroom. Then you have some showers over here as well as some bathrooms. Second floor also has uh, birthing pods, little capsules that you guys will see here in a sec. All right, so up here you have just a sink, lovely view in my bathrooms, and now we're gonna get into the birthing area, living quarters, so gotta be quiet in here, guys. No talking. It's... So this is where you keep like all your bathroom supplies and stuff like that, for taking a shower and stuff. And here is just a bunch of different uh, like living areas. Now, I'm gonna show you where I live, where the magic happens. Wow. So yeah, we got uh, some carpet here for uh, the entrance. I got a laundry bag, a little storage box for like electronics and clothes and stuff, and glasses and other things. Got my uh, clothes up here, my shirts. Then moving further in, we have the big futon. This basically takes up like the whole freaking uh, living space, but I love it. It's about the size of a full-size bed back in America. Maybe a little bit smaller. Camera equipment, stuff like that. Apologies for the lighting. My main uh, computer setup, so I had to get a monitor because the uh, onboard mo monitor for uh, my laptop went out. So I bought an external monitor, and I got all my peripherals and stuff there. And then underneath, you have uh, these two little boxes, and that's with like my socks and underwear and stuff. Shower towel. Now I got a humidifier for the uh, winter months. It's very, very helpful because it gets really dry in Japan during the winter time. And then I got a little fan, which is uh, very useful during this time of the year when uh, the humidity ramps back up and uh, you need to keep cool. Antiviral protection, some uh, hand sanitizer, Tipeka's the brand. And I also got an extra bottle in here somewhere, but uh, that's between you and me. Then I also have some other sanitizer over there as well. Then I got a little power tower to connect all my stuff off in there. Yeah, pretty much everything else. And here's what it looks like over this way. All right, so let's go ahead and move on up into the common areas. I love all these murals and paintings and all kinds of different stuff up in here. It's really cool. Then you have some more bathrooms and a shower. Then you have the kitchen area. So if you guys like to cook, this is where you'd hang out. Be sure to do the dishes too. <laughs> but yeah, they got pots, pans, rice cookers, all kinds of different stuff. They also have toasters, microwaves, a little hot pot there. And then if you uh, like to cook stuff, you could also store your dry food up there as well. Then they also have fridges. So if you like to keep things cool, that's where you keep them. Then this is like the main dining area. Plenty of space. And you can just sit there and watch TV. Hopefully I don't get copyright struck. <laughs> then in here you have uh, one of the little study areas. Plenty of uh, space to get your work done. And uh, lots of cool stuff in here as well. So yeah, let's go outside. Get just a lovely view of the uh, Shinjuku skyline from here. On nice clear days, I like to go up there and uh, take pictures a bit higher up so you can get uh, more shots. 
that lovely skyline out there. Just gorgeous, man. Can't beat it. So yeah guys, that was my Japanese guest house. Now, I'm sure you guys are wondering just how much do I pay to uh, live in such a wonderful place? Well, the full price for this guest house is 36,000 yen a month or about $320 American. If you get a smaller futon, then it would be 33,000 a month. And that is full price, keep in mind. Uh, there are plenty of discounts throughout the months, especially um, if you come in during a holiday like Christmas, you get very nice discounts uh, for the first month. Then the second month would be about 27,000. And then from there on out, it would be the normal price depending on what size uh, futon you have. So regardless, even at full price, I still think it's a tremendous value, especially if you're a student like myself with uh, your campus out in the Shinjuku slash Shibuya area, very close by. And also recommend it to anybody who's just getting started out here in Tokyo. Uh, it's very conveniently located, very affordably priced, and it'll give you a chance to get some boots on the ground and actually see what Tokyo is like, see the areas that you want to explore, and uh, just get started out here. So, can't recommend this place enough. It is Guest House Tokyo, Nakano. Be sure to leave a link down below in the description. So if you guys are heading out to Tokyo, be sure to give this place a go. And that's it, guys. This is the Andy San. Signing for now, and as always, and forever. We'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Hey guys, Andy here, and today on Andy Japandy, we're going back to where it all started. That's right, we're back in Yokosuka. Coming up.
So yeah guys, finally made it back to my old apartment out here in Yokosuka. It is on the sixth floor, taking pictures of, uh, well now the sunset, and then the sunrise over that away. Used to not have this big ass chain link fence around this part, and used to have a whole bunch of fishermen come in here and fish, but I guess they uh, blocked it off, so you can only do it from over there. So yeah guys, that was my little tour back here in Yokosuka for the first time in nearly five years. And for the most part, it's about the same as when I left it back in 2015. But there's a few little differences here and there. And uh, I'm not gonna lie, I really didn't feel super nostalgic about it until I got back here to uh, my old neighborhood. In fact, that's my apartment complex right back there where I used to take wonderful pictures of the ocean behind me and uh, stuff like that. So, yeah, man. Can't believe it's been almost five years since I was here last. Who says you can't go home, right? Uh, man, it feels, feels good to be back, even if just for a little bit. Yeah, being back here is now starting to bring back all those old memories. And uh, it's good to be back, but uh, I gotta get going. So, with all that said, guys, this is the Andy Sign. Signing for now. And as always, and forever, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Hey guys, Andy here, and today on the special episode of Andy Japandi, I'm going to do a little unboxing of my Japanese stimulus package. Coming up. All right, so here is my Japanese stimulus package, also known by me as Abe Bucks. So it just came in the mail today. Now normally you can have the option to put this into your Japanese bank account, but since I don't have one, I elected to have it uh, be sent to me. Now, I, I originally didn't know that they would actually like physically mail this out to me. I thought I would just have to go to the uh, ward office to come pick it up, but uh, they sent it to me via certified mail, all that fun stuff. So uh, today we're just going to open her up and uh, <laughs> see what's inside. Although you all know what's in there. So, open this guy up. And obviously my personal info is on the other side, so I'm not gonna show you. Okay, here we go. So we got ourselves a little opening. Just slip the top and reach inside to see what's all in there. Woo. All right, so up top here is a uh, return envelope to the uh, Nakano City office. Then here, basically a proclamation of what this is, 100,000 yen, about $922 American, roughly. Uh, just basically says it is what it is, so there's that. It's basically saying the same thing, just maybe a little bit, a little bit more detail. And last, but certainly not least, we got the money. All 10 of these bills. All right here, baby. Dang, look at it. <laughs> Would you look at it? It's so awesome, isn't it? <laughs> so yeah, guys, that was my unboxing of my 100,000 yen stimulus package, also known as Abu Bucks. And with all that said, guys, this is the Andy San. Sign up for now, and as always, forever. We'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Hey guys, Andy here, and today on Andy Japandi, I'm gonna be cashing in all my coins. Coming up. So yeah guys, today is gonna be quite the interesting video because over these past eight going on nine months since I've been back in Japan, your boy has accumulated a fair bit of coin, mostly in the one to five yen variety. And the reason being is that these coins aren't usable in most machines. And in fact, most people just give them out to a little box in the kombini or just throw them out basically. But I recently found a fun way to 
cash in on these bad boys. So for my fellow Merc Gen Tachi audience, you'll probably know of a service called Coinstar, which basically allows you to take your whole coin collection, dump it into a machine, have it get sifted through, and then you get a little voucher that you can either have scanned at the register and then they just give you cash, or you can use it to buy groceries or whatever the heck else you uh, purchase at uh, your local Walmart. And I recently found out that they also have some Coinstar machines out in Japan. And I found one that's actually really close to where I live, out in Kawasaki Kanagawa. So today I'm gonna be taking my entire coin collection out there and uh, your boy's gonna be cashing in. So before we get to that, let's see the coins. So here we have my coin collection. I just got this little tote from Daiso dollar store out here in Japan. Over the uh, past few months, I've just basically dumped all of my one and five yen coins in this little tote and it's uh, gotten pretty heavy over these past few months. So really looking forward to uh, lighten the load, if you know what I'm saying. So let's give you a better look at my coin collection. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Andy San, that's a whole heck of a lot of coins. Well, I figure let's up the ante, shall we? I'll go ahead and add all the coins that are left in my wallet. Bam. So yeah, now that we have our lovely coin pile ready, let's bag this bad boy up and uh, cash in. So yeah guys, we out here at the Fuji supermarket out here in Kawasaki. So let's go ahead and cash some coins. See you inside.
ご利用ありがとうございました返却口に効果がないかお確かめくださいじゃあ、私はこの辺りのコインスターを買ってみてください。私はこの辺りのコインスターを買ってみてください。私はこの辺りのコインスターを買ってみてください。私はこの辺りのコインスターを買ってみてください。私はこの辺りのコインスターを買ってみてください。私はこの辺りのコインスターを買ってみてください。私はこの辺りのコインスターを買ってみてください。私はこの辺りのコインスターを買ってみてください。私はこの辺りのコインスターを買ってみてください。Something a little peachy. So, anyway, so I thank you guys for tuning in this video. And with all that said, this is Andy Song. Signed for now, as always, forever. We'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Hey, guys, Andy here. And we gotta talk. And thankfully, it's about something positive for once in 2020. Jeez, Pete. So, as of today, guys, it's official. I have graduated from. Lakeland University, Japan. Just had our graduation ceremony and it was all done online. So I was literally just sitting over there on the computer in my t shirt, my jammies,、uh, getting all graduated. It's definitely very surreal.、Uh, it still hasn't quite sunk in yet in the old、uh, head brain that、uh, I finally did it and、uh, graduated with my first post secondary degree. You know, if you would have told me 16 years ago when I graduated high school back in 04, yeah, your boy's a bit of an old head. But if you would have told me that 16 years later I would be going to college in Japan and graduating and doing it all from my own Japanese apartment, guest house, right in front of the computer, in my jammies and t shirt. I would not have believed a word that you said. It was all complete fantasy during that time, especially with、uh, limitations of technology and whatnot. But also, just the fact that I would even be able to go to Japan at the time was such a far flung fantasy. When I was a kid, what got me interested in Japan initially were my cousins who were stationed out in Yokosuka during the、uh, early to mid 90s. And you know, they would constantly talk about their time out here in Japan, and they would send me back in Ohio gifts and all kinds of stuff. And that's what really gave the idea of going out to Japan to visit. My family was supposed to visit them, but、uh, you know, due to some personal stuff that happened, never got that chance. The idea kind of died at that point, but it was still always there in the back of my mind that I was gonna. At least visit Japan just to see what it's like in person. And, you know, one thing led to another was、uh, going to college. And that's when the first wave of、uh, J Vloggers came around on YouTube.、I、saw guys like、uh, Tokyo Kuni and the late great Roger Swan. Swan, especially, had an impact on me because, you know, he and I were close in age. He was a year younger than me, and he was studying abroad in Japan, going to Keio University. That was such an appealing route for me because before, you know, all these other people who were out in Japan making videos or whatever, they all had bachelor's degrees and jobs and all this and that and the other. And, you know, being a college dropout at the time, I didn't see a path for me to get out here to Japan. I just thought it was completely closed off. And I was like, well, you know, I guess this is it for me. You know, that, that's the only way I'm gonna get my Japan fix is watching people who are already in Japan doing it. When I got those orders in, in 2013 to transfer out to Yokosuka, Japan, when I was in the Navy, and I landed at Yokota Air Force Base, I was finally in the country for the first time.、It、seemed like a dream come true. like, This is all just some weird fever dream. One day I'm just gonna wake up and I'll be back in San Diego where I was stationed at previously. But nah, it was 100% real. As you guys could tell from the original Andy Japandi series that I had on、uh, my now personal channel, I was just having a blast. When my time in the military was up, 
at the time I didn't know you could study abroad out here on the GI Bill. So I figured I had a good run out here, but uh, it was time for me to go back to America, uh, get my degree and come back to Japan once again, but uh, to be an English teacher. And uh, from there, just kind of figure it out. As you guys know, life takes many, many turns and went through a really bad depressive episode when uh, I was in school out in Michigan and it really affected my grades and just my own mental health, you know, and just got to a point where I had to drop out of college once again to, uh, to just figure myself out. And it was really devastating, you know, like at the time I, I felt like I really needed it because I was just so burnt out with, with everything, just trying to, trying to make it work. Because, you know, when I dropped out the first time many, many years ago, it was because I didn't have enough money. And this time I thought it was going to be different because, you know, I'm a little older, a little wiser. I don't have to worry about money because I'm on the GI Bill. So everything will be taken care of. All I got to do is just show up to class, do the work, and uh, carry on smartly. But uh, life had, had other plans. After uh, I got out of school again, <laughs> being a uh, two-time dropout, that's when I connected with uh, my old shipmate. He was uh, my former LPO, actually. And he told me that he was getting out of the Navy and uh, going to school out at uh, Temple University in Japan. And I was asking him, like, how can you do that? Like, I thought the GI Bill was only usable in America. Like, how are you able to, to afford that? He's like, oh, no, it's Temple's basically like a, an American school because, you know, it's a satellite campus of the original one out in uh, back in America. Hey guys, Editor Andy here, and one more person I would be remiss in not giving a shout out would be Jim from the Kids Shore Yukon channel. Jim is a fellow veteran like myself, and he's also a fellow alumni of Lakeland University of Japan. It was all thanks to Jim for recommending me to Lakeland in the first place, because after I got rejected by Temple, I didn't know where else I could go. Jim reached out to me and he told me everything about Lakeland and helped me get in. It's all thanks to him that uh, this is possible. Definitely major shout out to Jim of the Kid Shuriken channel. Cannot recommend his channel enough, especially if you're into the retro Japanese video games. He's got you covered. So anyway, back to the video. And it just kind of, you know, started a little spark to uh, make me think, you know, coming back to America kind of got me on this whole depressive funk because I didn't really know who I was. And I felt like, you know, going back to Japan, I would, you know, figure things out again. I would be creatively inspired again because I felt very stifled living out in Michigan and later Ohio. I just felt like it was just an total environment just full of gray lifeless machinery I figured you know I just need to get back to Japan to uh, figure myself out again at that point my GPA began with a decimal point and I hadn't been in school for a year and a half so when I applied to this very school Lakeland University of Japan I had to have a meeting, basically like an interview with the dean and a couple teachers just to kind of get them to feel for who I am and uh, what are my goals and things like that. And I thought it was going to be something like that, you know, a bit like a basic job interview, just kind of, you know, get a feel for who, who I am and stuff. The dean basically spent like 15 minutes, you know, just grilling me about why my GPA was, was such dog shit and just making me feel like a complete piece of shit, to be honest with you guys. When that Skype call was was, was, uh, was done, I felt so worthless. I felt like that's it, you know, because I couldn't get into Temple at the time because, you know, again, my GPA <laughs> began with a decimal point and they didn't accept me. And now uh, Lakeland is rejecting me. So I'm like, what the hell am I going to do now? So. Instead of just 
rolling over and accepting my fate, it, uh, it lit a fire under my ass. And so I decided to uh, rehab my GPA, show them I'm serious about this, and took a couple classes at community college to uh, boost things over at uh, Fayetteville Tech in uh, North Carolina. And when I reapplied, he was really impressed, the dean was, of my academic improvements. So he decided to accept me into Lakeland under probationary conditions. So it basically means that I can't go below for uh, can't go below a 2.0 GPA. And if I do, then I'll, I'll be immediately academically dismissed. And it's a little different when you're academically dismissed in a foreign country, because not only can you not go to school, you can't exist in the country anymore. So you guys have to go back home, basically. So it was a lot on the line, some pretty high stakes. But I accepted it, took a couple more classes at Fayetteville Tech to uh, boost my creds, as well as save up some months on the uh, GI Bill. Uh, the end of December 2019, fast approaching the one year anniversary of my re-arrival back in Japan, I, well, came back to Japan. And I stayed at the uh, guest house out in uh, Nakano Shimbashi. Lived in literally a wooden box. Like, you guys have seen the, uh, the tour videos. I was living in a box, like, no ands, ifs, or buts about it. But it was cheap, it was in Tokyo, and it was mine. I felt like I had finally arrived. I was just on cloud nine, you know? It's like, all right, I'm finally here. All my hard, hard work is paid off. Let's go. So my original plans were to um, attend Lakeland for two semesters, graduate, and then transfer over to uh, Temple University of Japan with uh, my associates in hand, and then continue on for uh, my bachelor's. During the second semester, I had submitted my application to Temple. At that point, at, in Lakeland, I had about a 3.3-ish GPA, so I was doing pretty darn good. And I figured it was uh, an easy win, right? Just apply. I talked with uh, the student liaison over there. He just had very high hopes about everything, just saying everything's all good, no worries, just going to be an easy get, right? But, as I said before, life has other plans. And I got rejected from Temple. And it was at that moment where I felt like, is this it? Did I really risk all of that? to come out here only to have, you know, my knees cut out from under me. And there was, um, there was a moment where I, I thought about giving up. I thought about just being like, all right, between Clone Chain World Tour, Temple rejecting me, and all this other stuff, like, I gotta give it up, man. <laughs> it just, I can't do this anymore. You know, but there's also another voice saying, you know, did you really come this far to only get this far? And I decided, you know what? If I'm going, if I'm going down, I'm going down swinging. I decided to fight back, basically, and uh, just finish that semester as strongly as I could. But when I got the temple rejection, it was right before midterms. Midterms really sucker punched me. And I didn't have a whole lot of opportunities to fight back and recover. So because of that, my grades weren't as high as I'd wanted. And I ended up failing my math class. Not only <laughs> did I come like three credits away from graduating, I failed my math class. So now my GPA is lowered. The whole reason Temple rejected me was because of my past mistakes. They didn't take into account my improvement over the past year and a half from going to Fayetteville Tech, rehabbing my GPA, 
going to Lakeland during a pandemic and still maintaining that GPA, it wasn't good enough for them. And because of all that, it, you know, just led me to get in this little depressive funk and it was hard for me to, to bounce back. You know, when I saw the failing math grade, because it was required class, like I was set to graduate the previous semester, but because I failed math, I, I couldn't. So I just felt so devastated. I'm like, gee, you know, what do I do? Do I lose my visa? Do I have to go back to America? Like, what's what's gonna happen? But thankfully I talked with uh, the staff over at Lakeland and I was able to not only retake the math class, but also take other classes at Lakeland because when I told them about all this, they also gave me some information about what's uh, gonna be going on at Lakeland. And that is, they're gonna be starting up a bachelor's program. And they wanted me to be one of the first students to uh, be a part of that. You know, when, when I got that, that email from, from the staff over at Lakeland, I, I was in tears. Like, so I thought everything was over, you know. I thought I'd have to have to go back to, to Ohio or North Carolina or something, work in a factory the rest of my life, because I, I had nothing. But that continued to give me some hope that I can still continue to, to live out here and to do my thing. I dusted myself off and signed up for uh, for all the classes. And uh, I finished this semester, and I finished it strong. Now, at the time of this recording, I don't have all of my grades from this semester, unfortunately. So, the first three grades are official, but my math grade is unofficial. I basically just counted out how much I got from uh, all the homework and tests and stuff. For my Core 2 class, I got an AB, which is like an A minus, B plus, somewhere in between. For my general business course, I got an A. For my microeconomics course, I got a B. And for my math course, the same course I failed previous semester, I got a B minus, unofficially for that last one, I wanna add. My GPA, I guess would be over 3.0 or at a 3.0. I only got to be mice in math, folks, so I, I can't do it off the top of my head. But I did it. I graduated, and uh, now I can move on to the next piece of business in life. It just seems so surreal that I went through all this and uh, finally succeeded. So I'm sure you guys are probably wondering, well, What's going to happen to the old Andy Sand Sam Modesta? What, what am I going to be doing moving forward? So, the plans are to switch my student visa over to a job hunting visa, which is a technically designated activities visa. Then I'm going to work for a video production company that teaches different languages. Uh, they're based out in Tokyo. So I'm going to working for them in addition to continuing to do freelance work and other stuffs on the side. And once the bachelor's program for Lakeland is set to start, I'll rejoin as a student again. And at the time of this recording, they're scheduled to start for the summer semester, so around May-ish, I believe. But as we all know, in life, Hard is subject to change. So just gotta keep an open mind and uh, keep close. So I just want to take this time to thank you guys out there for uh, for all the support. You know, I just, you know, reading all your comments and all the direct messages and everything that you send me, you know, I, I read all that stuff. And I'm just, I'm so thankful also for the Discord community that we've, we've built up. It's pretty small right now. Times according, it's around 69 members. Nice. <laughs> but it is a nice community full of great discussion. 
And it's actually thanks to that community, as well as the videos I've put up on here, that I managed to help three oncoming students at Lakeland take initiative to, not, to apply to Lakeland, get accepted, and they're gonna be starting in the spring of 2021. Woo. So to think that little old me from nowhere Ohio with only a handful of subs can manage to change the lives of at least three people, well four, me. <laughs> I know, cheesy, whatever. But to think that uh, I have had such an impact on other people's lives, you know, I don't mean to say it to like humble brag or whatever, like I'm something special, but you know, it, it, this is why I do YouTube. You know, a lot of people get it twisted and think that I'm just in it for the subs or the money or the views or whatever. And don't get me wrong, those things are nice. You know, it's 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 a nice feeling to know when that uh, Google paycheck hits. It's a pretty good feeling. But an even better feeling is affecting people's lives for the better. It fills me with so much joy to know that uh, that I'm doing that despite everything going on in the world, and despite everything going against me. So, we'll just end things here. So, with that said guys, this is the Andy san all graduated with my associates from Lakeland University of Japan, signing off for now, and as always, and forever, we'll see you next time. Catch you later guys, bye.